in my sight. I forgive you on the top of slamming you at this moment. I don't blame you for the crime you committed. I'm not angry at you for being clever, hurting my son, and dead brothers. I'm angry at the devil. I blame the devil, the devil, who misguided you and misleading you to be such a horrible crime. Forgiveness is the greatest gift of charity in this life. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the compassionate, the merciful, I should sure thank you for the opportunity to be part of this noble program to promote peace, mercy, and forgiveness throughout the humanity. Uh, when I look at the interfaith, interconnect, I see the bridge. Our program today is the program to build a bridge of love and understanding among human uh, humanity. And it's so appropriate for me to share the concept of Islam because the, I want to be just to uh, the host, the interface, interconnect to share with the beauty of Islam in terms of um, the words of Allah Almighty in the Holy Quran in Arabic. And inshallah, please bear patience with me. Islam promote multiculturalism and diversity. I promote um, this concept in America, in Thailand and in Southeast Asia as I travel because I was uh, thankful to Allah Almighty for 50 years of my life to promote uh, Islam and the beauty of Islamic education to many sc schools across the United States. So since Islam promotes multiculturalism and diversity, and the, this evening is very appropriate, I will share with you uh, the holy word of Allah Almighty God. A'udhu billahi minash rajim يا أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل إلى لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله the meaning in English, O oh mankind, surely we have created you from male and females, from Adam and Eve, and have made you nations and tribes, so that this is the purpose of God Almighty who create all of us in diversity so that you may know one another. You see that we have never seen each other, Ruth, which has met you now. And I get to know you because of these verse God indicated and Marcia too. So and then God make a judgment. Surely the, the best of you or the, the, the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the one who the best in conduct. So that's why, that's the only criteria uh, God, Allah Almighty will judge us is our conduct with one another, with God himself and the human being that he created. So here, 
in America, I found that Islam promotes diversity and con uh, multiculturalism. And when I look on the bottom math map, I don't see Thailand, so I put it real big. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a Thailand map now on the map of the United States. Now what happened? America, multicultural and diverse society. Islam teaches us that all human beings are created equal by one creator, Allah Almighty. Humans are like tulips, my favorite flowers, a tulip. They are flowers of different colors coming together to make a beautiful garden of human race. Um, Marcel, you like to see tulip? Here we are. I know you have in your garden, front yard even, beautiful. People from all over the world migrate to the United States of America, the land of opportunity for a few lives. Together they help create America, a new multicultural and diverse society. Therefore, America is the world's most diverse nation in the world. Diversity make America so uniquely attractive and beautiful. And all of you, my viewers this morning, this evening, you are so beautiful because you are the tulip of human race. That's what Islam stands for. Diversity make our country great. What truly make our country great is its diversity. I have seen that beauty in so many ways over the years. Whether we are born here or seek refuge here, there is a place for all of us in America. We must remember it is not my America. It is our America. Miss Michelle Obama, our former first lady from 2009 to 2017, where I went to the courtroom to testify. That this written was written July 29, 2019. Here, you see them, recognize this first lady and the first family. America is a place for all of us. And America is our America. Now we get into how does the topic for this evening, how does your community provide for those in need of forgiveness. In Islam, in order to manage our life and the life of our community, we, go, we follow uh, the Holy Quran, which is, and the, the two source of information in Islam is Quran and a Hadith. Holy Quran is the, the words of Allah Almighty. So meanwhile, the word and the action of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, inspired by Allah in the book form of we call Hadith and Sunnah. Let's understand what the Rabbi Miller shared with us regarding the forgiveness. I found this uh, definition of forgiveness remarkable. It fit my, um, my life in the courtroom in, in the Lexington, you know, uh, Kentucky. Forgiveness is the intentional and voluntary process by which a victim, this is I am, undergo, undergoes a change in feeling in attitude regarding 
and offense. Offense. Let go for negative emotions such as vengefulness with an increased ability to wish and to offer uh, to to wish the <laughs> offender well. That what exactly happened to me uh, in the courtroom. This is uh, when I hug him and I whisper to him and I know this uh, only the first time in my life to meet him and I'm sure that will be my last moment to be with him because 31 years of imprisonment, uh, Allah knows best what, whether I will be alive. But I told him if I were to be alive, I will welcome him out from the dark room of prison and bring out, bring him out from the light of the world and be a family. See, this is my last word that I advise to him, my last advice to my dear nephew. Oh, my dear nephew, I forgive, I have forgiven you. You may start a new chapter of your life. You must reach out to Allah Almighty God. Bow down to him, bow down to him and seek his forgiveness and seek his forgiveness. He will forgive you. I pray for your safety because prison is not the place to enjoy yourself. Very dangerous place. So I pray for his safety. Now, this is the first source of Islamic information and knowledge, which is the glorious Quran. Allah Almighty God addressed that would you not love for Allah to forgive you? This is the word of Allah in translation. Would you not love for Allah to forgive you? In my case, uh, our youngest son refused to forgive. Uh, after working for two years and seven months before the court time, because the night of murder, he was with his brother. And he was the first to receive the news from the three policemen at three o'clock in the morning that uh, your brother not coming home, he, he's dead. So he was very bitter. He loved his big brother. So finally, the mercy of Allah grant upon me to comfort my heart. Our son, the youngest one, able to forgive when he saw me hug the man. And he said, oh, Baba, I forgive him right away. After I saw you hug him, whisper at him and offer him the tissue. He's not a monster. He's a human like us. He's just being meatless for, for by the evil, the devil. So Allah loves those who seek, seeking forgiveness from himself. That means from Allah and from human being. So this is the, the verse that helped me, uh, that comfort me so much because our family able to obtain 100% forgiveness to the man that hurt us so much. God said, Allah God Almighty said, Wal ya'fu wa yasfahu ala tuhibbuna ala tuhibbuna Allahu lakum wallahu ghafurur rahim Let's see what translation inspires us. Allah Almighty God said, and let them forgive. Command me to forgive and overlook his shortcoming because that's his mistake, but you forgive him. And then God, Allah Almighty said, would you not love for Allah to forgive you? So I address to my five sons because my wife, uh, may Allah bless her soul, Return to Almighty God mercy uh, and, you know, 13 months before our dearest son got murdered. So I just look at what Allah promised us, asked us, comfort us that would you not love that Allah forgive you? Oh, Baba, yes, we like to forgive him just what you did. Now, then 
forgive him until the last moment our youngest boy forgive. I thank Allah Almighty God so much for his mercy. Now, start to get into the topic, but this is a foundation of Islamic community that uh, we use the Holy Quran and uh, the teaching of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, to solve the issue of any affair. The Imam and Muslim leaders, even Brother Munir, Safi, he will use the Holy Quran and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad, which is in, in the form of a hadith or sunnah, the practice of the Rasulullah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him. Then, therefore, in Islam, there are two types of right violation, human right violation, or two types of right violation. In turn, form two types of forgiveness. Because you all violate some, somebody's right, then you have to seek forgiveness, and then two rights of forgiveness. The first right, the right of Allah Almighty. In Arabic, uh, we call it the hukukullah, the right of Allah. Right number two, the right of human beings, in Arabic words, hukukul ibad, the right of his servant, Allah's servant. Remember, whether Muslim or not yet Muslim, we all created by the same God, Allah Almighty. Therefore, you have to respect every human being, whether they are in the same faith with you, but Allah Almighty is the same God to that person and to us. So you have to respect them so that you can respect Allah, the creator. Now come to the right of Allah, Allah. The first person who commits sin against Allah is our father and our mother, our father Adam, peace be upon him. And then our mother Eve, Hawa, peace be upon her because of they disobey Allah. Allah asked them not to go near the tree so they will not be tempted by devil to eat the fruit from the tree. But because of the temptation, that's why all of us every day, every moment will be tempted by, uh, by the devil. Then Adam realized the mistake. So he prayed this. And Muslim all over the world will pray this word from our first father and mother Eve and uh, Hawa in Arabic, every day we recite this forgiveness, pray uh, many times. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal qasirin. Enjoy the meaning. I, I say this inside the prayer, outside the prayer. Sometimes while I was driving, I mow, mow the lawn and washing the dishes. I will recite it because I'm a sinner. 24 hour sinner. I sin by my eyes, see something that unlawful uh, is unlawful. My ears listen to the gossiping or something that not permissible in the by God and uh, in Islam. So I say this, Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam ta'fir lana wa tarahamna lana kunanna minal qasirin. O Lord, our Lord, we have wronged our souls. This is our father and mother, Adam and Eve. Peace and blessing be upon them both. They commit sin, but they accept the mistake, remorseful, then we, they reach out to God Almighty and say this word. Our Lord, we have wronged our soul. If you do not forgive us and have mercy, mercy, very important concept in Islam and on humanity, mercy on us, we shall be lost. So Allah Almighty forgave them both. However, they have to accept the consequences. Forgiveness is kind, but you have to get out from the heaven, from the paradise, and live on earth until we are living in the earth, on earth today, because we are the children of Adam and Eve. Now, 
this is the most important thing that we are dealing this morning or this evening is how your community provide the access to those who need forgiveness. This is the, the human right violation here. Violating the right of human being, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, described in Hadith. There are three things that none of you will shall violate of any human being or even animal. The cat, the dog, the cow, you cannot violate their rights. The, you cannot overload the donkey, for instance, or you cannot mistreat the cats or the dog. But now we're dealing with the human being that the most noble creation of Allah God Almighty. Three rights, don't even violate it. Number one, name and reputation, no gossiping, backbiting, or lie against them, okay? Number two, wealth and property. This is the right that no one shall violate. As a principal of Islamic school in America, I teach this so much heavily. So our seven Islamic school that I uh, promote Islamic education, we have very peaceful um, environment, Islamic environment. Our son, Salahuddin, his right number two being violated because all of his belonging was robbed. And even pizza <laughs> that he tried to serve the man, he got it and he, he ate the pizza too. He must be very hungry because also he has involved in the drug. This one that really painful uh, physical safety and life that our son lost. Now, the source that you heard, you saw that from the Holy Quran, this one second source of information and knowledge, hadith, okay? Before we get into the really action of uh, problem solving, and lead into the forgiveness. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him said, it is not permissible for a Muslim to abandon his brother for more than three days, three days, no more than three days. It's a cool off period. The title is said that three days as a cool off period during personal conflict. If someone abandon him for more than three days, and he died during that period, he will go to hellfire. How serious it is, very serious. Then he said again, the following um, teaching, Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him said, if someone abandoned his brother, in Islam we call each other brother, sister. If someone abandoned his brother for a year, his sin is, is like a, you are killing his brother. It's like a kill a person. That's why Islam so much emphasize about human relation, establish the bridge, build a bridge for understanding and love and forgiveness. In Islam, it is permissible for two Muslim with conflict to have a three day cool off period during their personal disagreement. What happened here? However, it is considered a sinful act if they do not reconcile, if they do not reconcile, reconcile after three days. Then that's lead to the second slide on the Hadith teaching. This is really uh, the, uh, the masterpiece for the Muslim to live in peace with, with the community. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said, people deeds are present to Allah before Allah twice a week, Monday and Thursday. That's why Muslim follow Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. We fast every Monday, we fast every Thursday. I'm fasting today, okay? <laughs> because I want to follow my beloved prophets, our beloved prophet. And then he continued to say, and then every slave of Allah is grants forgiveness. On, the, on Monday, twice a week, that's a very big deal. Twice a week, Allah forgive 
his servant sins, minor sin. The big sin is if he does not associate any thing with Allah in worship. This is the biggest sin that Allah will not forgive. But sin, any sin, come to him with a, seeking his uh, forgiveness, he will grant it. But the person whose heart there is rancor, it is rancor against his brother or sister, will not be forgiven, will not be pardoned. With regard to them, it is said, why he still, he still give time to his servant, his slave. Hold these two until they reconcile. Hold these two until they reconcile. That's why uh, I <laughs> enjoy being Islamic school principal, but inshallah, I have an um, example at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. How could you enjoy being the principal solving the conflict issue? But I will share with you. In Islam, violating the right of humans are far more serious, are far more serious than the right, violating the right of Allah Almighty. Number one, when Allah, Allah's right being violated, that person must seek forgiveness directly, sincerely, like Rabbi Larry said, directly and sincerely from Allah and the underlying, he would always forgive. He would always forgive because he loved forgiveness. Rabbana, uh, in the, in the, during the holy month of Ramadan, we beg Allah for forgive. Okay. Number two, when humans right being violated, that person must sincerely, remorsefully, that's what the, I think Luz mentioned that too, seek forgiveness from a, from the victim himself. You cannot go, uh, go talk to somebody, I forgive that man, uh, I seek forgiveness from that man, but you didn't go to the one that you violated, right? That's not uh, permissible. If forgiveness is granted, go to number B. He will seek forgiveness from Allah, for violating the right of his servant. You see that? And that man killed our son. So he violated the right of Salahuddin. So Saudan, Saudi already dead. So I'm the father and his mother also dead. So his father had the ownership of, of Salahuddin and his five brothers. So we're dealing with uh, the one who uh, killed him. And finally, we solved the problem and we're all both happy, okay? So number B, he will then seek forgiveness from Allah for violate, violating the right of his servant, which is Salahuddin. We are the servant of Allah in Islam, servant or slave of Allah with the noble servant, the blessed slave. Now number C, this series, I'll go along with the teaching of Prophet Muhammad on the, on the right on the left screen. However, if forgiveness is not granted by the victim, Allah will not forgive him. His deed will be hanging in the sky, like a, on Monday and Thursday, uh, like a, the cloud hanging in the sky will not be accepted until reconciled, until he makes sure that the one who had the right violated said, I forgive you. Now you can go to Allah. Allah will forgive you. Sure enough, he'll forgive. This is how the beautiful teaching of Islam. Now go to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. He was sent at the mercy for mankind. This is how he deal with the forgiveness issue, the murder issue during his time in Medina, in Saudi Arabia, Medina. A man came to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, with the killer of his slave in his hand. He hold his hand, hold his hand to come to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. There's a, to, he asked the Prophet to deal with him like a the state and government issue. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said, forgive him. 
that he's advised. The man, but the man refused. Prophet then take the blood money, but he, the man also refused. So the first thing is that in Islam, uh, three, three things during the crime, the mur murdering crime, life for life, Allah said in Holy Quran, yeah, you, that he can kill that you will not be wrong because he killed your sons. But that's number one, and we, we forego that one. Number two, take blood money. And in the United States, instead of Kentucky, there is no blood money. So go to the best, which is forgiveness. That's why you saw the video clip uh, from the Lexington, Kentucky. So the man refused again. May I, I don't want money. I want him to be killed. All right. Prophet Muhammad wisely told him, go and kill him. And for you are just like him, like a murderer. So what happened with the man? Problem solved. So the man let go of him. Let him go. So Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, is our divine role model that I, I used throughout my life. I used the, in 30 some years in Islamic school, solve the problem, but I used the, the plowing mechanism. <laughs> All right. Let me move this a little bit. This is a mechanism we call the conflict resolution, Salam, S-A-L-A-M, peace. Salam means peace, like a religion of Islam name is religion of peace. So Salam start with number one is stating, stating that when someone come to my office, the should uh, two should come to my office with conflict. So I look at Salam A S stating, state the conflict. A uh, number two second step. A, agreeing, agree the conflict exists. Three, L, listening, listening, listen and learn. And then A, come, Salam is advising, advise each other. And number one, number last that will lead to forgiveness, maximizing the spirit of Islamic brotherhood, Islamic, um, Islamic friendship and friendship that will lead to forgiveness. I will share with you the, my actual experience uh, in, in the following slide. So this is a mechanism, the model that uh, I use to solve my community when people come with conflict and want to reach the state of forgiveness. We call Salam Peace Model. Now, during my dealing with the student or the parents or the school board <laughs> or the teachers, I use these three things. Number one, be sincere. In Islam, emphasize heavily sincerity. Number two, think before you say and act upon what you say. Because you have to establish relationship with your student. Number three, speak from your heart. It will reach the heart of the people this picture of my assembly. Now, this example that I will share with you. Personal experience as the Islamic school principal in America. How does your community provide or, or those for those uh, in need of forgiveness? Okay. It takes a courage for a person to say, I am sorry. I'm sure you experienced that too in your life or even your own self. It takes a courage for a person to say, I am sorry. In the same time, it takes a bravery for a person to say, please forgive me. Mom, forgive me. Dad, forgive me. It takes bravery for, for the son and daughter who make mistakes. But no problem. We have to deal with each other with unconditional love and affection. Now I have an example of case one. Case one is a from the student conflict. Case number two, parents conflict. This really happened in my life a lot. So these two friends, 
sent to my office by the teacher. They have a physical fighting. What did I do? I put them, I greet them, assalamu alaikum, welcome to my office. I use my office as the face of education, not a office of oppress or make the kids afraid. The kids respect me, but they come to me. So uh, somebody says, something. yes, yes. The time, uh, time is up, right? Ruth, his time is over, I think. I am muted. Uh, let's see. You're not anymore. Oh. Um, well, you, you're, you, you're right in the middle of these two cases. So uh, why don't you quickly finish them and then we'll end. Yes. I have uh, two I more slides. That's it. I have two. Yeah. Okay. I just go with our explanation how that. So the, okay. I, finally, I was able to make the, the two students who conflict physically agree upon, and then both of them say this, I'm sorry, I was wrong, please forgive me, and I forgive you for the sake of Allah. So job done for me as a principal solving the personal conflict of my student. Now the two fathers have to come before we suspend the two boys. Dealing with the kids is not a problem in my life. Parents is the most critical one for me. Come to the point that the father came to my office, they blame each other for your son, uh, hit my son and hit her, his, hit, hit first, his last. But I was able to use my wisdom to make, they come to the point they want to have a physical, physical fight in my office. I ask them to calm down and sit down and say, I billahi I seek, I seek refuge um, from Allah in Allah again the devil. Sit down calmly. I want, I have to say something. So finally, long story short, I said that, did your son kill the other son? He said, no. Did your son kill the other son? No. You know that I, your principal, my son got killed. I used my real life case. My son got killed by a man I never know, but I forgive him. Can you forgive each other? Now they both cry. Then they say this word, the same thing. They come and hugging each other. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Please forgive me. Then I forgive you for the sake of Allah and they hug. Then I called the boys that we already reconciled. The father came, asked the boy to, uh, to shake hand with the other father, seek forgiveness from the father. The same thing we are the boy came and say, Salaamu Alaikum, peace be upon you. Shake the hand and seek forgiveness. Now, both boys, very good friend. Both father, very good men. They invite each other for the barbecue picnic. So this one, we provide our community in this capacity. This one uh, probably too, uh, too long for me to, to share with you because the time is up. This is a real case, personal experience. A true story in America, a Muslim, her loved one got murdered. She was unable to forgive herself. She was unable to forgive the killer. So she left Islam. Real life crisis. How can I forgive when it hurts so much? So I don't have opportunity to share the story. This is a real story. And the journey in, in the real estate promoting forgiveness in Islam. So right here I am. Open your heart to forgive those who have wronged you. The one who created your heart will forgive you. So what is in your mind, that's what it is. But time is over. Okay. So I know that some people have uh, other things they have to do. And uh, feel free to sign out. We are going to have another religion chat like we do every month on um, September 8th and um, we'll send you an email and we hope we'll see you then and thank you very very much for signing in today and if you want to stay a little bit longer and ask some questions 
why we'll let's say we'll take another 15 minutes to do that so i have a question um how long did it take before you started thinking about giving forgiveness when did you start thinking about the process of forgiving or was it immediate you mean this um, is the on my personal experience with our yeah. sons okay yes. Um, it for as a father and uh, the principal of thousands of kids and teachers in America, it won't take me long to to forgive uh, because I dealing with this in my life a lot. But the most important our five remaining sons, so I, I have to use my father fatherhood uh, to bring them along by using the the teaching of Allah from Holy Quran and the example of Prophet Muhammad to whom he forgave all the people who heard him during his lifetime. So because they were the product of Islamic education, so it won't take long, except the last one I told you. So it take the whole thing is two years and seven months, but for me, uh, I already forgave him before entering the, uh, the courtroom. So seven, uh, two years and seven months, but no one know that I forgive, but I already prepared to forgive. Okay. It does answer your question? Yes, Because does. I know if I, this is a lifetime opportunity, that's why I told our sons, this is a lifetime opportunity that to earn forgiveness from Allah by forgiving someone that hurt us so much. They agree there because they believe in the, the book of Allah, Holy Quran, and then believe in the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. They agree, and then we forgive because we're going to earn a lot of forgiveness from his mercy too. So uh, I am very happy with them. I took them to Makkah to perform Hajj even, to give them as a, as a spiritual gift to perform Hajj right after the courtroom uh, incident. Thank you for the question. Are there some other questions? Yes, please. Yes. Hi there, can you hear Ahlan wa sahlan, welcome. You are so <laughs> handsome, my brother. Thank you, sir, so much. Can you hear me? Yes, can you, I, I can hear you. I can see your handsome oh, face from please. Edmond, Canada. Edmond, yes, Canada. It's not really a question. I just really wanted to say hello. And, and I just want to tell everybody about how uh, Dr. Jitmood saved my, he, he really changed my life. And um, I don't really have time to tell the whole story, but it is quite a fascinating story. And uh, I cannot thank him enough. And I love him very much and his family and Salahuddin. God bless him. Mm -hmm. So you, you saw was, video, then you change your mind. It, it's so it's it, the story is so long because I was such an the opposite person that I am now and um, you really opened my eyes to um, what real life is about and you know I just yes just thank Allah and brother Abdul Razak bow to Allah and thank him for his guidance we knew a mix, but we love each other uh, very much brother very much more than my old brother Okay, and I pray for you and put ask Allah to protect you uh, from COVID-19 and all harm that done in the society because we will be test. Of course. So be patient when we got test, but we also every day, every moment, we got blessing. So be thankful to him. When we breathe the air each time, that's the blessing. Be thankful to Almighty God and bow down to him and, uh, and uh, we will see each other in paradise. Would you like Excellent. that? I love. I would love. <laughs> wow, it's, you use Arabic term now. <laughs> For sure, so it's so nice to hear your voice, and I'm really glad that uh, I took the day off to listen to you. And uh, yes, it's great. Thank you for coming on over. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure. and uh, thank you for the this uh, interfaith uh, chat program. Tamha make us uh, who never know each other to know each other because this is the bridge 
that you, the organizer, have built for the humanity to come to know each other for the sake of uh, unity of humanity. In Islam, we have a um, unity in brotherhood, a Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, because we are coming from Abrahamic faith. So I teach the students in Islamic school, we are cousin. So you have to respect and love each other. The other group is uh, the children of Adam. All human being, any religious uh, organization or any faith, they are our relative because we have the same father, the same mother. So this agreement may take place, but you have to think and deep, take a deep breath and then you before you react. That's why think first before you say and say uh, and act upon what you say. So, so that you will not be hypocrite. Be sincere in everything you do and the problem will be solved. The mercy of Allah Almighty God will come, make you become a man, a, a woman of tranquility, peace within yourself, peace within your society and family. All this because we need each other to love each other for the sake of Almighty God Allah. Especially at this time, the time of COVID-19 pandemic, we just have no time for each other. We just have no time for each other. We're just afraid of everything. We don't have time, father, mother, son, and daughter to spend time, a quality time to love one another, to hug each other because they won't allow any hugging, not allow any handshaking. What happened with family relationship? What happened with the community relationship? What about, I want to reach out to you today across the Pacific Ocean, okay? But at least this program build the bridge for me, not just to know only my brother um, Munir, but I, I meet all of you this morning. That's why you are the guest from Allah Almighty God for me to see today across the ocean and continent. So what happened now is not accident. I want Alan to know that this is not accident, Mr. Troop, had been ordained, had been decreed, had been written that on the 11th of August, 2011, we will meet over here. No accident. That's why when I see each one of your face, oh Allah, I thank you for sending this beautiful face the face of tulip of human race for me to greet and to see and to talk to. I thank you. I thank you, oh Lord God Almighty. Thank you. Thank you for coming all the way across the ocean mm -hmm. to talk to us. We really appreciate it. You are a so sweet young lady. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are. Everyone so beautiful in his and her own way and handsome uh, from his whole way. That's why I talk to the student. Everyone is beautiful. Everyone is handsome. So you have to think positive but be negative in COVID-19. Be positive in life, but be negative against COVID-19. Then you will be just fine. Trust in Allah. Trust in God Almighty. <laughs> and good to see you, uh, Ruth and Marcia. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Hello. Oh, that's my sister from Indonesia, right? Samila? Assalamu alaikum. I don't know if Ruth has time. Okay. Good to see you here. Look at uh, from the 101. 17,000 island. She's with us today. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. See, Ruth, this is not accident. A person in the island come and meet with us. That's why your program, your uh, interfaith connection, this really connect us, as you say it. And I thankful to Allah Almighty and give you the, bless the blessing of your life. Okay. And all the family and those who organize this program and uh, move on without any issue and problem. I don't know if uh, uh, Marcia can talk. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Is she there, Marcia? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you can hear your voice. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Um, oh, you, yeah, you are. I don't know if we have time for one question, one more question, or if we should wrap it up. Ruth, what do you think? I think that uh, I haven't heard any questions in the last couple of minutes, but if somebody has one, speak up and we'll continue. Or maybe we're all tired. <laughs> Yeah. I know it's late for you and early morning for me, yeah. no problem. Thank you so much for speaking. And I'm glad yeah, we have you. the recording because I'm yeah. very interested in doing it again. <laughs> there, again. I, want to, I want you to ask your big favor, Ruth and Marcia, take good care of Munir for me. We will. Okay. <laughs> I, I know him, but I never, I never saw him <laughs> in person. So take good care of him and his family too, okay? Such a wonderful young man. Thank you. And thank you, Munir, for inviting Dr. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All the work that Munir did to make this happen. Thank you, Munir. My pleasure. So I think we can wrap up and um, again, you can email interfaith dot interconnect at gmail.com if you want to sign up so you can uh, come to more of these meetings. Yes, definitely. They're free of charge and there's always something interesting to think about at them. All are welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, before we sign off, I must um, apologize for every mistake that I made. It's come from my weakness. Anything that uh, the audience and the viewer able to take forward the positive outlook, that's from God Almighty. I thank you. And I, my, my apology to organize it. Please forgive me. <laughs> we'll forgive you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. You are so generous. <laughs> Good night, one thing I allow to One thing I, I allow to say to all of you is that I love you for the sake of Allah, Almighty God. Thank you. I love all of you for the sake of Allah, Almighty God, not for any other sake. Okay, so that our our love will be everlasting because God is everlasting. And that's it. I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know, when I see people new in my life, we're so excited. Oh, Allah, how merciful you are to send these guests for me to enjoy in my uh, short life in this world. I really thank you. I didn't really, I, I, I don't want to say it. We'll sign off. Yeah, we'll sign off. We'll sign off. Bye. Okay. Good night and good day. Yeah.